Hi, my name is Elia Bonazzi and I work in the ST Curriculum Group at Oracle. Here, I'm going to show you how to configure a GridLink data source in WebLogic Server 12c. Such data source will access an Oracle Rack server using a single client access name or scan configuration. Initially, we will make sure that the Rack server being accessed is available and visible over the network through its scan name. We must use the SVRCTL or Server Control tool to configure and verify the status of both scan listener and scan. The ultimate test, however, is using the TNS ping utility providing the scan name which identifies the Rack server to make sure that it is accessible over the network. Once you are satisfied with the preliminary checks and you are sure that the Rack server is available and accessible, you can use the WebLogic Administration Console to create the GridLink data source. So, let's get started. First, we'll access the RDBMS Enterprise Manager utility to verify that the Rack server is running and to check its name. The Oracle Enterprise Manager shows an overview of the Rack instance which we want to access from WebLogic. Its name is rack.localdomain and the cluster name is OL6-112-scan. We use PuTTY to connect to, to one of the servers hosting the Rack instance. We will be using five commands to perform all the necessary checks to make sure that WebLogic GridLink can access the Rack instance. First, we will be using server control config scan listener, which displays the configuration of the scan listeners available to the cluster. Secondly, we will be using server control status scan listener, which shows the status of the scan listener. We want to make sure that the scan listeners are both enabled and running. We will be using then a server control config scan, which displays the scan name and the virtual IP addresses associated to it. The fourth command is a server control status scan, which shows the status of the scan. We want to verify that all nodes participating to the cluster have the virtual IPs enabled and running. Finally, the TNS ping command uh, will make sure that the Rack instance named Rack is resolved by the TNS. The last check that we will perform is to use SQL Plus to connect remotely to the Rack instance. Here, Server Control shows three configured listeners, which are reported to be enabled and running. Server Control also displays the scan name OL6-112-scan. TNS ping shows the Rack instance as reachable. Finally, a connection attempt is made through SQL Plus. Once connected, a SQL query is issued to find out the instance name, server host, and service name. After having made sure that the Rack instance is accessible, we use the WebLogic Administrative Console to configure the GridLink data source. We start by locking the administration panel to prevent concurrent changes. Then we expand the services node of our domain structure and select data sources. A set of forms will appear guiding us through the configuration steps. We will have to briefly resume our party session to find out the Oracle Notification Services TCPIP port, which is a parameter required for a grid link data source configuration. Finally, we will test both listeners and ONS nodes to make sure that GridLink can contact them. The last step is to save the configuration and release the lock. First, we connect to the WebLogic Administration Console. 
Then we expand the services link in the domain structure, selecting data sources. Before making any change, we click the lock and edit button. We create a new data source, choosing grid link data source from the pop-down menu. A new form appears. As a database driver, we select the JDBC driver for grid link application continuity. In the new form, we select one phase commit and click next. Then we choose to enter the complete JDBC URL. When the connection properties form appears on screen, first we erase the default database username and we replace it with our specific database user, Oracle. The JDBC URL for a scan configuration must follow the convention shown in the gray caption. Before leaving the form, we must provide a password twice. The next form allows for the testing of the listeners just defined. Upon a successful test, a feedback string is displayed in the messages window, stating that the connection succeeded. We must now find out the Oracle Notification Service remote phone number. So we resume our party session connected to one of the servers of the RAC cluster. We must display the content of the ons.config file located in Oracle Home slash opmn slash conf. In this track installation, the remote port number is 6200. We go back to the WebLogic admin console and in the ONS client configuration form, we enter all nodes participating in the cluster, suffixing the ONS port. This specific rack consists of two nodes, so we add two entries, rack1 and rack2. A new panel is displayed in the form allowing for the testing of all ONS nodes. We click on the test button and after a few seconds we receive the feedback from the system informing us that the ONS nodes were contacted successfully. We have now the option to deploy the newly created GridLink data source on the entire WebLogic cluster or on a selected node. We choose to deploy it on the entire cluster. The last remaining step is to save the new configuration and activate all changes. This last operation completes our demo.